make sure that we primed outside and put a little bit of a zenithal highlight on. Um, this one was not quite as highlighted as I'd like, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. So what we're going to be taking a look at here is some of the components of the miniature. So it looks like we have quite a bit of exposed skin here. We have some sort of fur cloak here. We have, it looks like he has foot wraps on because you can see some toes coming through here. And um, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it could be like a... Uh, a leg warmer <laughs> of some sort. This looks like it's a, a, the continuation of the cloak that's kind of blowing between his legs. Some metal plates here, or I'm deeming the metal plates for armor. He has some armor pieces up here with some studs on it. His weapon. His shield, which looks like it's made out of wood based off of the grain on the back. But it looks like there's uh, some sort of possible metal here and here and maybe some metal studs here and he has a beard and quite a profound beard and mustache some really nice eyebrows he has ears which is always nice some sculpts don't have all those little bits so you have another ear there and um, looks like he has a little uh, piece of jewelry around his arm like an armlet and um, some pouches. So there's one, two, and then there's another one right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the skin. And I'm gonna use something called uh, Warrior Flesh from Reaper. I'm gonna shake it up real good. And I'm gonna use my new handy dandy palette there that I got from ReaperCon. I'm kind of super excited about using this. Alrighty, I'm just using a regular old brush. Uh, I believe this would probably be considered a zero. These brushes I'm using right now are army painter brushes, but um, there are lots of brushes out there. Find the ones that you like and go with it. Just don't go too cheap because bristles tend to come off when you paint and it leaves a whole mess on your miniature. So go ahead and start with his chest here. Make sure I get under his arm. Uh, we're just going to do base coats right now and base coating is probably one of the easier things you're going to do just because if you make a mistake it's easy enough to go through and correct it. Um, now if you notice I'm, there's uh, areas that aren't getting covered properly I'm going to go back over and do a second coat of all this just to make sure. I'll try and draw away some of that paint so I'm not globbing it on there. Uh, one thing I do like to try and make sure of is that I get paint on every surface. So there is not an area where primer is showing through during this base coat process. And again, if you make a mistake, no big deal. You can go back and correct it during your cleanup before you start your highlights and shading, which is really the uh, the meat and potatoes of where all these contours come out and uh, makes your miniature look amazing. So I'll go through and just kind of get all this stuff. Um, I did get paint on his armlet, but I will remember that that is not flush and go back through and touch it up. I think I'm going to make that a metal of some sort. Um, as I'm putting all this stuff down, what I want to ensure as well is that I'm not going over areas that I already painted until they are dried because what will happen is you'll pull the paint right off. So just kind of let it let it dry, come back over and do a second coat. Try and make sure I get all those toesies. Try and thin that out a little bit. Um, when it comes to digits, toes, fingers, things like that, 
Um, I try to make sure that I don't lay down too thick a coat only because it ends up removing the detail and so I just try to lay down a nice light coat um, otherwise you end up with meat mittens <laughs> and it doesn't look like a hand at all and uh, you basically just covered up the artist's hard work of uh, designing the miniature so try and be careful with that and again I'm gonna leave that as is I'm not gonna go too crazy with it I'm gonna draw off some of this paint and uh, I prefer to get too little on there than too much because we again will lose detail Um, in all honesty, I have painted three of these already for three different videos. <laughs> so uh, I have pretty much got this guy down to a science now. Uh, we decided to, I shouldn't say we, I decided that I was going to reshoot them. Reshoot the videos because the quality wasn't really as good as it should be or could be. And uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, I have... Just recently started painting miniatures again. It's been a very long time. And so I'm not only learning how to paint again, but now I've added an additional layer of complication with trying to actually film it. One of the interesting things uh, with dealing with a uh, black primer is, if you notice his arm right here, there's already shading happening because of that black primer. So I'm going to leave those areas untouched and uh, that will lend itself to some of the shading that I have to do later and it will be a little bit easier. Alright, so I think we're good with those areas. I'm going to go ahead and do his bald little head. One thing I'm going to try and do is keep his eyebrows uncovered It'll make things a lot easier for me to paint them later. And also to remind me that there are eyebrows there. When you do enough of these, sometimes you forget some things. And uh, paint right over it and then you're like, hey, there are eyebrows there and I missed them. The other thing I'm going to try and do is avoid his beard as much as possible. Not a big deal if I hit it, but um, it's just easier in the long run to get those elements done if there's not already a coat of paint on top of them. Looks like there's a little schmeckin' on my brush there. A brush booger. Let me go through. I'm going to try and get his head as good as possible. Make sure I get his ear, back of his neck, his other ear here. And again, I'm probably going to have to go back through and do another coat. Um, I try to lay down thinner coats, and I'll just go back in and touch him up. I'm going to get his rosy little cheeks here. I am going to leave his eye sockets dark. It will help me gauge a couple different things. One, uh, where his cheeks are. Two, where his nose is. And try and get those highlights when I lay them down. It'll make it a little bit easier to discern. So when you go through this process, uh, I tend to think a little bit ahead and uh, start thinking about areas that would look really good highlighted or shaded. For instance, his nose and his cheeks will have a little bit of a highlight to them. I'll high highlight the ridge of the nose and the tips of the cheeks. I think he's in pretty good shape for the first coat. 
So let me go ahead and rinse my brush off here. I'm using all my Reaper swag that I got from my box that I got this week. Don't hate, don't hate. Um, good products. I, I haven't uh, used any of the new paints yet. I will. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so I am going back over an area that I already painted. The paint should be dry by now. It doesn't take all that long for paint to dry. Five minutes maybe. Unless it is very humid. And then sometimes it takes longer. I really want to make sure that I get this area as close to his belt as possible. Just so I don't have to go back in there and try and clean it up later because then I'm going to have the metal down and other elements done and uh, it's just going to be a real pain in the butt. Okay. Now I'm trying not to go over there. There looks like there is a like a sash or I shouldn't say sash. It's like a strap going across his chest and there's a buckle in there too. So I want to try and keep all that stuff clean. If I can. Again, if you get paint where you don't want it, there are ways to remove it like I just did. I've got most of the flush done. We're looking pretty good. As stuff starts to dry, I'll go over it with a second coat. Again, paint doesn't take a terribly long amount of time to dry. But just be careful because otherwise you'll go through and you'll end up removing it all if it's still wet and when you go back over it with your brush. Uh, I mentioned his hands. I'm going to go back over and do another light coat on his hands here. So one of the things that I am using right now and you can't see in frame is a magnifier. And the magnifier is great for me because my eyesight isn't great. I'm not as young as I used to be. Some people are able to paint them, and I was able to paint them when I was younger without this, but it's uh, very helpful. But it also comes with at a price, and that is you see all your mistakes magnified. And so it can kind of drive you nuts when you're looking at things and uh, after, after the fact and realize that there are all these little details that may not look great but that is under a magnifying glass. To the naked eye it won't be visible. So I don't tend to worry about it too much unless it's just hideous and I have to change it. Okay, so I think his hand is pretty much done there. Double check, maybe the back of his neck some more. Even though that's probably going to be a shaded area. I'm going to make sure I get some decent coverage on that. His head and face look real good. See those massive eyebrows? Those are going to be interesting to do. I have, uh, <laughs> in the past two videos, had some issues with those where he came out looking like a drag queen. That being said, I'm going to try and make that not be the case today. Just clean up his hand here a little bit. Again, just light strokes. I don't want to fill in those areas between his fingers with a lot of paint because then you lose that detail. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with the skin. Go ahead and rinse my brush. And we will move on to something else. All right, so next, let's look at one of the largest elements on him, which is his cloak. And fur is always uh, interesting. You can deal with fur in a lot of different ways, or at least I have. Um, one of the things that I, for me, for this particular miniature, what I'm going to do is lay down a base coat 
and um, then I might do a darker wash to get into these crevices and then I am going to actually do a dry brush of a lighter color to catch all the little bunches of hairs. Again with your paint shake them up real well so that way they come out in one cohesive drop otherwise you'll get separation because they do separate and you'll get more liquid than you do pigment and it will not go on properly. It'll go on real watery and not cover anything so go ahead and mix that around a little bit and I'm gonna start I'm gonna start down here at the bottom. And uh, if it doesn't happen to get down into the crevices, that's fine. Because again, I'm going to do a wash anyway. Not trying to lay it down too thickly. Because again, you'll lose de the detail that we're going to try and highlight and a later stage here and uh, I gotta remember he has bags here and I just went over one with some blue but that's fine I'm gonna paint over that when I do the bags properly some paints coat better than others I've noticed this blue actually uh, isn't terrible. It's a dragon blue. Um, so it seems like it's coating pretty well. Some pigments don't and you have to really go over them a couple times to get them to come through. And I am not uh, as worried about complete coverage with this just because I'm going to be going over with a wash and uh, a darker wash and that's going to be filling in a lot of those areas for me. Uh, again he has a bag right here so I don't want to get that. And actually this uh, magnifier has a light on it. I don't turn it on. I'll turn it on for you just so you can see it, but wow. <laughs> yeah, it kind of definitely washes out the entire thing. So, but they are very, very handy if you um, feel like you need one. It's great because it gives you some really good optics on the finer details. Again, some people have really good eyes and they can I've seen a lot of people just do it without without a magnifier altogether. I used to be able to do that when I was in my twenties. I can't do it now. Okay, so that came out pretty good too. I like that. Now we can't forget about his shoulders because he does have fur there. I'm gonna need a little bit more paint, I think. Just a touch. And as you're going through this, make note of what paint you're using so that way when you go back, if you take a break, you know exactly what colors you used. I use a uh, app called Paint Rack to keep track of my stuff. And uh, I have a demonstration video on that. They are not paying me a dime to mention them, but I've just found uh, the actual app on my phone to be very very helpful try to make sure I get the edge of the cloak as well because again otherwise trying to clean up that if there's nothing there later can be real painful because you're gonna be laying paint on potentially finished surfaces and uh, it can be frustrating. So, just gonna have that. 
I'm going to do this side as well. Try and make sure I get the underside of the cloak. Those, uh, oop, I got some on his arm. No big deal. I still have a base coat cleanup that I'm going to be doing. There's some cloak in here that I missed as well, so I'm going to try and get that done. Okay. And these are, um, this particular miniature is from a game called Massive Darkness. These are what are considered troglodytes. And I have a whole bunch of them to paint. Batch painting can be very effective if you have a plan. And so, for instance, if I was going to be batch painting 10 of these, I would do all the skin, then all the cloaks, then all the weapons and shields. That way I'm not switching back and forth between paints for every single miniature. I can just kind of go through and do four or five of them at a time. Very effective if you have an airbrush as well. I do not have one of those. I, not that I wouldn't use one. I just don't know if I'd be any good at it. Maybe if things take off, I'll go through and grab one. I have to get this area here. So there is, um, it looks like there's some metal plates on his legs right there. And the metal plates down here. There's an undergarment of some type there that I need to make sure I differentiate but for now I'm going to just deal with the cloak again just base coating trying to get make sure I have paint on everything on all surfaces I don't have any bare primer sitting out there you can always clean clean up your mistakes. So I try to be a little bit more careful just because cleanup can be time consuming. Even though it uh, is effective, I would prefer not to have to do very much of it. I'm going to go in and get his legs. Um, I do use a technique called stippling, and stippling is basically just laying the tip of your brush down into the paint and then dropping the brush down onto the surface in targeted areas where maybe a brush stroke isn't advised. So for instance, very small spaces. So his this area right here, I stipple the bristles stop me from hitting any elements that are raised. Very useful technique. I have this big hunk of leg right here. And uh, I'm trying to avoid that pouch there so I don't get a whole bunch of stuff all over it. Part of the reason why I don't like to go back over stuff a lot is, again, you lose detail. And then he doesn't have muscle anymore or there are areas there that aren't visible. And um, again, I think that's the reason why a lot of us paint is because we love those little details and we want to make them look good. Using colors to differentiate elements. 
So we have, um, obviously this flush is a little tan, so we have a axe handle here and we have a wooden shield here. We wouldn't want to use some a similar color there. How about a, a nut brown for his shield? It's a much darker brown than everything else. Go ahead and do that. Start with the inside. Again, try not to lay it on too thick because we want to keep that wood grain. It's going to make for a great area for any washes that we use to collect. So if you notice this color obviously uh, much darker than his flesh so his hand and his arm is really distinguishes a separate element. And uh, I like this color quite a bit. Trying to make sure I get the edges. And this particular paint goes on rather thick, so I'm not quite as concerned about coverage. It's going to cover just fine. But I will do a touch-up coat because a lot of times we miss things. Um, I'm going to do the outside of his shield. I'm going to try to avoid the center because, again, I think that is going to be, that and the outer ring are going to be metal. Okay, I think his shield's about done. I'm not real worried about getting anything in the crevices because we're going to be doing some pin washing on those. Pin washing is just applying and then putting the wash all over the area. You place it into various areas with your brush. So you're basically drawing in the uh, wash. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry and tackle something else. So I don't know about you guys. Um, I started painting when I was probably about 12 to 14. And I only paint a little bit because uh, money. <laughs> it's It wasn't the cheapest thing to do and I was a kid and didn't have any money. So because of that, I didn't paint a whole heck of a lot. Now as an adult, I have my just a little bit more money and so I can kind of do this stuff um, and during the pandemic it seemed like a perfect time to take up an old hobby and my friend Jeff is an avid painter he, he goes by the uh, handle the cave troll and he is a very very good friend of mine he walked me down the aisle when I got married um, he was my best man and he is one of my best friends and he's messaging me right now. Um, he's been really helpful with uh, some of the video composition. Uh, just because, again, I'm learning all this stuff. And uh, I'm sure there are going to be some continued tweaks. But this is infinitely better than it used to be. So I'm just going to fly with it so we can get our first video up and running. I can move on. Not sure if I mentioned this in a different video, but that's also how I approach painting. I got some blue on him here, right there, so I'm going to try and get that off. See how easy that's fixed? Boom. Gotta love base coats. Uh, anyways, I was saying, I approach painting the same way uh, as I'm uh, approaching some of these videos. It is mistakes that make you better 
and a lot of times when I paint, something may not come out perfect, but I will not sit there and futz with it for hours at a time because I know that the next one's going to be better. And so rather than frustrating myself and burning myself out on a miniature, I will just put it down and move on to the next one. Now, whether or not I revisit that miniature later, I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just call it a wash, and uh, I number it. This is my first miniature I've ever done, and I move on. My second miniature I've ever done, move on. And then it's kind of cool to watch as your skills grow. Uh, I watch a guy uh, named Brent who is part of Goobertown Hobbies. If there's anything I learned from him is to paint, I paint kind of fearlessly. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You get some paint where you don't want it. I mean, it's not life or death. But by doing that, it opens me up to explore a lot of different techniques and uh, styles. So if there was one thing I, was, I would give to you, it is that credo of paint fearlessly. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to film miniature videos is I think it's it's much easier when you watch somebody who's just kind of going through this stuff on their own and figuring it out and hopefully I'm going to lend some help to some of you and we're going to have a good time. I can't wait to see what you guys produce. I have, I have a lot of uh, ideas for the channel, but right now I'm just really trying to get a actual painting video done. <laughs> okay. I think that looks pretty darn good. The shield's looking real good. Um, sorry, as I was talking to you, I was kind of going through and, and uh, cleaning up some of these coats here. Like there's a little top of his head we didn't get enough paint so I'm gonna go through and paint over that I really do like this sculpt quite a bit not just because I've painted it like nine times um, but uh, there are some really nice elements that I've recognized painting it nine times I'm sure it feels like cheating but uh, What element should we tackle next? Should we tackle... Let's tackle his tummy area here where he has all that metal. Now I happen to like the color copper, but I got a new paint in my Reaper box, ReaperCon box, and I think it's gold. And I want to try this out called pirate gold now if you notice most of my bottles I have a drop of the color that's in the bottle in this little nipple area here um, I have not done that with the new ones but it just makes it usually just kind of reference you can also turn the bottle over and look at the bottom especially if you're comparing shades so I'm kind of excited to use this gold I know that sounds stupid but Apparently this is a very rich troglodyte because he has gold goodies. Oh, look at that. Maybe he's the um, the leader. Okay. That's one of the other things that I've done um, just to kind of help myself when I'm painting is I try and give a little backstory to my miniatures. Now if you notice I'm getting a little gold on his stomach, that's going to be okay. I'll go back and correct that. By creating a little backstory or a character for these, as I paint them, it gives me some justifications as to do certain things, such as using gold on armor plates. 
Looks like there's another plate here I'm going to get. I'm going to name this guy Biff because he's got all the bling. He just seems like a Biff, I don't know. I'm just talking to myself now. Uh, and when I was doing the unboxing, I mentioned metal miniatures because I haven't, I haven't really painted metal miniatures since I was a kid. Most of the ones I paint now are epoxy or, I mean, are resin. And um, the other ones when I painted them when I was a kid were lead or pewter. And I was not aware, Jeff mentioned this, that the miniatures that are produced, at least by Reaper, are pewter as well. Pewter for me, when I worked with it, was very, very soft. And so dropping one of those miniatures was um, traumatic because it would bend and all sorts of stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting, in, getting into some of those. I think I'm going to do a, a pirate-based video because of Brinewind. That was their new release of uh, Sculpts. And I am looking forward to painting some of those because if you saw the unboxing, there are some beautiful miniatures included with that. When I have paints already poured out, sometimes I'll look for other ways to use them so that way I don't waste them. I really like the Reaper dropper bottles. I do have a couple... Um, Citadel pots. Um, I'm not as big a fan of those because you can knock them over and spill them and I'm pretty klutzy. But the paints are excellent. Okay, since I already have the gold out, we have gold here. Maybe he really likes gold. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this area gold as well. Try and use that up while I'm thinking about it. Now, metallic paints, when you use them, I shake them up uh, a little bit more than I would just a regular color. There is a, I believe it's like mica, that is what gives it its sheen, and a lot of times that will settle. And so while you'll get the color, you won't get the sheen if you don't shake them up enough. Just make sure I got all that. So now I have his armlet here that I'm going to attempt to do ever so gently. Without getting gold paint all over the place. For this, I am literally just dra dragging the brush lightly over that raised area. I am getting a little bit on his arm, but I'll be okay. I'll clean that up. Yeah, the uh, miniatures for Massive Darkness are really good. Um, very high quality. Um, and the game came with a ton of them. So I have a, a ton of paint, or a ton of uh, miniatures to paint. And you'll see me going through those as well. I'm going to try and get Jeff to join me in painting those. He lives out of state, so we'll be doing this remotely. But he's an incredible painter in his own right. A lot of Warhammer. Huge Warhammer fan. Great guy. Navy vet. Just retired about five years ago. And uh, really enjoys painting. So hopefully I can get him to do something with us. Okay. Alright. Looks pretty good. For our first go around here. See there's another plate right in there that I had to get. Got that. I got his armlet. 
I think that's what it'd be called, an armlet. You have a bracelet, but then again, that would be a wristlet, wouldn't it? Well, the English language. Okay, we've got that done. We're moving pretty good. So, I say we tackle his weapon next. And it looks like there is a, an outer blade and an inner plate here. And then we have a, uh, a hilt that looks like it might be wrapped in something like maybe leather. I would assume leather. We're going to use a perfunctory uh, blade steel, I think. I mean, it is called blade steel for a reason. And I'm going to zip right around the blade itself. Excellent. We have silver out. I'm wondering if I want to make these studs silver as well, but it's too early to paint those because I really need to do a base coat on the surrounding area before I do those. I try and leave that stuff to the end. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use gold for, since we already have it out, for this inner area. Okay, so that's what we have for his blade. I think that looks pretty good so far. His beard and eyebrows are another area that we need to address. Kind of like the red. So I'm going to go with a darker red called Chum Red. This is a new one uh, that came with the Brine Wind stuff that I got from my Reaper Com box. So I have not used this color before, so I'm very interested to see what it looks like. And I guess I could t test it out on a miniature, but what the heck. Let's just go ahead and give it a shot. Now there's quite a bit on there. I'm going to try and get some of that off. So let me go ahead and just try and get his, a little bit of his beard. Ooh, that looks good. And then what I think I might do is do a dark wash into his beard to get to some of those crevices. Man, that looks really good. And I like that color. Good job, Reaper. Try and get his mustache. I am using a zero brush. You could use a triple zero, which I may do here in a minute if this doesn't work. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. Try to keep his mouth unpainted because that's another element that I'd like to play around with. There is beard here. Again, I'm just kind of lightly dragging over the area and see what it catches. Now, the next uh, element of his face which has caused me great pain in the past is his eyebrows <laughs> so I am going to attempt to do this with, with just a zero brush and see if I can get this to see if I can just get it to catch his 
Let's catch the ridges. That doesn't look too bad for a first attempt. Plus drag Queenie this time, I think. Look at that. Can you really see those? There they are. I don't want to futz with them too much. Because then make mistakes and we have to redo them <laughs> and they're not my favorite things to redo again we're still in base coat processing right now seeing how everything looks this is the time to test your colors and if you don't like them you can take care of them right away that looks really good I have some gray here I think I might make his Lake warmers down here, gray too. And there are some awesome folds in these straps and stuff down here. So I want to try and preserve those for our highlighting and shading. And what I'll do is, once we're done with base coats, I'll go through and clean up all this stuff. And we'll come back to it after I've done that. And that way you don't have to sit and watch me noodle. But I'm not sure if you want to watch a four-hour video of me painting. Probably not. Speaking of which, I'm about ready to take a break and come back. Hey everyone, we've come down to the last 15 minutes of the video involving base coat cleanup, which I've sped up as it's just about as fun as watching paint dry. I know that you aren't working on the same miniature as I am in the video, but I wanted to go through it as if you were, so that way my methods made sense. This is actually a two-part video with the second part dealing with highlights and shading. Those two skills are key to making your miniature come to life. While there are many different techniques, I'll be demonstrating what is working for me and in future videos explore other techniques to get even better results. A lot of these skills I've learned from the Reaper Core Skills Kit and their Shade Up Kit. Excellent resources for the beginning painter. I'll leave some links to those kits in the description in case you're interested. I'm looking forward to you sharing your creations with me. Until next time, paint fearlessly 